response out of you. So you're awake and moving. Welcome to the Atlanta Kindlands Neighbor Saint Methodist Church. I'm Joe McCarran, the lay leader, uh, semi worship leader today, because we got a package duo in our fill in today, so I kind of get the week off. Uh, I'd like to welcome Fran and Bill Knoll. They will be uh, preaching and leading us today. I'd also like to welcome Nancy. She will be our guest musician today. So we have a lot of new faces around, but we're excited to have them all with us, and we look forward to worshiping with you and celebrating God with you. So as we start, uh, you can check your bulletin for the few announcements we have. The calendar is there. Uh, book club coming up in a few weeks. There is a gift card bingo. Of course, you know on May 7th, we're heading to the Lincoln Tunnel. If anybody has any questions about that, you can see me afterwards. I'll be in the chapel uh, to help you answer questions. What can you do? What can't you do? Uh, if you need help registering, just come and see me. Uh, so that's the announcements I have. Does anybody else have any announcements they'd like to share? Okay. As we come together as the uh, body of God, it's a good thing to come together and worship and pray together. So this morning I asked you, what are your prayers? Okay, we got one. So we pray for all those in Alabama and everywhere in the world that are facing violence and struggle. Are there any other prayers? We pray for everybody dealing with fire situations and emergencies and weather and everything that's causing a lot of strife in the world. Are there any other prayers? All right. As we continue on, I'd ask that you rise. Let's greet each other with uh, an Easter greeting. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. say thank you for inviting us this morning. You haven't met my husband yet, but we were, have been Methodist ministers for over 40 years. And in those years, we had separate churches. So in retirement, we like to come and preach together. So I dragged him along with me. Um, but we just love doing this, and thank you so much for having us. Let us now join for the call to worship. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Everyone who believes in me will never die. Praise the risen Christ. Our song is Easter People Raise Your Voices, verses 1 and 3 in your United Methodist hymnals, 304, are up on the screen. Christ has brought us in his choices. 
Let us pray together our morning prayer. Open the eyes of our faith that we may dictate your presence. Open the ears of our faith that we may hear your voice. Sensitize your feelings of our faith that we may experience the warmth of your love. We pray this in the name of the risen Lord. Amen. Now we invite the children to come forward for a children's message. chapter of the Gospel of St. John, beginning with verse 19. On the evening of the first day of the week, you know that means Sunday, Sunday evening, Easter evening, when the disciples were together, the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven them. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now, Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the 12, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. Thomas said to them, 
unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, that would be Sunday, week after Easter. The disciples were in the house again. This time Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told, them, told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And by believing, you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. There's a story about the atheist who went to Scotland and went fishing in that famous Scottish lake, Loch Ness. He was out on his boat in the middle of the lake when all of a sudden the Loch Ness monster rose out of the lake, grabbed the boat in his teeth, and tossed the boat and the atheist high up in the air. As the monster opened his jaws again to catch the atheist as he came down, the atheist cried out, Oh my God, help me! All of a sudden, time stood still. With the atheist and the monster and everything else frozen in time and space. And a deep, booming voice came down from the heavens, saying to the atheist, I thought you didn't believe in me. The atheist thought quickly, God, give me a break. 30 seconds ago, I didn't believe in the Loch Ness Monster either. <laughs> Isaac Asimov is a professor, was a professor of biochemistry at Boston University and the author of many popular science fiction novels, including the Foundation series. He was also an atheist. He was raised in the Jewish faith but as an adult, he rejected all of the beliefs of Judaism. Once in a nationwide television broadcast, interviewer David Frost asked Isaac Asimov about his views on God. At first, Asimov was very invasive. Who's God, he asked. I mean the Judeo-Christian God of Western tradition, Frost replied. Well, I haven't given it much thought, Isomoff said. Frost couldn't believe it, the great interviewer that he was. He wasn't about to let Asimov off the hook. I'm sure, he said, that a person with your wide knowledge and attainments would have sought to find God. Isomoff responded with a smile, God, is smarter than I am. Let him try to find me. That's not the end of the story. <laughs> the audience laughed. David Frost moved on to other topics. But the interview was taped for later broadcast. And as the day the actual broadcast approached, Isaac Asimov began to get a little worried. He was pretty sure that if there was a God, God would respect an honest atheist, but a wise guy atheist might be a different story. Sure enough, on the day that the broadcast aired, Isaac Asimov got a kidney stone attack. How many of you have ever had a kidney stone attack? Let me tell you, I have. <laughs> kidney stone attacks are miserable. Isaac Asimov said of his experience, there's no use in trying to describe the bitter, unrelenting pain. All I could do was clutch my abdomen, stagger around, and gasp, all right, God, you found me, now let me go. 
some people have trouble believing. This morning's scripture is about one such person, the disciple Thomas. Now, Thomas is not the only doubter in all of scripture. In the Old Testament, Abraham and Sarah, Moses, Elijah, Job, and Jeremiah, among many others, are all portrayed as doubters at one time or another. Thomas was a dedicated and willing disciple of Jesus. The Bible doesn't tell us much about Thomas, but we do know that like the other disciples, he left everything to follow Jesus. At one point, Thomas shows great courage. In the 11th chapter of John, when Jesus decides to go to Judea because he heard about the death of Lazarus, some of the disciples were afraid of going because of the danger, knowing that many Judean leaders wanted to have Jesus killed. But Thomas was the one who said to the other disciples, let's go with him that we may die with Jesus. Thomas was brave and willing but like the other disciples, he didn't always understand Jesus' teachings. On the night before he died, Jesus told his disciples, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? But when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself that where I am you may be also and you know the way where I am going. Thomas is confused. He doesn't understand all this talk about going away and coming again. So he asks, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And that gives Jesus the opportunity for his famous reply, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Thomas has real trouble believing that Jesus can go anywhere, even to God's heavenly kingdom and back again. So it's no wonder that he had trouble believing his friends when they tell him that Jesus has risen from the dead. Unless I see and touch the mark of the nails, he tells them, I will not believe. Thomas believed in God he believed in Jesus as the Messiah, God's chosen one, but he had trouble believing that the love of Jesus was powerful enough to overcome sin and death. Thomas wanted evidence. For Thomas, seeing is believing. In his book entitled, Some Things I Have Learned Since I Knew It All, I like that title, Reverend Jerry Cook tells of having successful open heart surgery. A few months after the surgery, Jerry was approached by a man whose doctors had advised him that he needed the same surgical procedure. The man asked if he could see Jerry's scars. So Jerry took off his shirt, and with his finger, the man gently traced the path of the scar on Jerry's chest. And then he said, the doctors say that the most painful part of the surgery will be the incision in my leg where they take out the veins for the graft. So Jerry rolled up his pant leg. The man got down on his knees to trace the scar on his leg. Thank you, he said. Now I have hope. Just like Thomas, who saw and touched the scars of Jesus, seeing and touching gave this man the strength that he needed. Perhaps you've heard of the term near death experiences, testimonies of people who have been clinically dead and then after a few minutes brought back to life with the help of medical science. Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross interviewed many people who had had such experiences and discovered that their stories had a great deal in common. 
I have a friend who had such an experience and he reports on his vision of a powerful light and an overwhelming sense of peace and love. Like others who have been near death, he is no longer afraid to die because he knows that God's love is so much stronger than death. The resurrection of Jesus is real. It's not fantasy or fiction. It's not a fairy tale. It's not a legend modified, embellished, and transformed it was, as it was handed down by dozens of generations. We have written testimony recorded from eyewitness sources. Although skeptical scholars have tried to disprove the truth of the resurrection, the fact is that the record of Jesus Christ rising from the dead is as well documented as any event in ancient history. But even if Jesus himself appeared physically in the sanctuary this morning, and even if each of us had the opportunity that Thomas had to touch his hands inside, there would still be some who did not believe. Faith in God through Jesus Christ is a choice, a personal choice that each one of us has to make. There's plenty of evidence for the existence of God, the miracle of creation, the birth of a child. There's plenty of evidence for the truth of the Christian faith, the obvious wisdom of Jesus' teachings, the effect of his message on the history of humanity, countless documented cases of miraculous healings in his name, and the personal testimony of millions of believers who have experienced his mercy and grace and love in their lives. But God gives each one of us the freedom to choose how we will live and who we will follow. There is another story about an atheist who was giving a speech ridiculing the Christian faith. At one point, he challenged the audience, if anyone here can prove I am wrong, come to the platform. An elderly man stood up and walked slowly forward. Produce your proof, said the atheist. The old man took out an orange, peeled it, and ate it. The atheist was getting very impatient. What's your proof, he demanded. The old man responded with a question of his home. How did it taste, he asked, looking at the orange peels in his hand. How should I know, said the frustrated atheist. I didn't eat it. Exactly, said the old man. And I just showed you my proof of the love of God. I've tasted it, and it is good. When Thomas finally met the resurrected Jesus, Jesus said to him, You have believed because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. There are many ways to touch, taste, and see the love of God revealed to us in the Christ who rose from the dead. However, we come to know Jesus when we discover faith in him. We are then very blessed indeed. So one further story about Thomas in the Gospel of John. In the 21st chapter, the last chapter of the book, Jesus makes one more appearance to the disciples as they're fishing in the Sea of Galilee. Thomas is out in the boats with John and Peter, James and Nathaniel, and a few others when Jesus appears on the shore. And Jesus calls out to them, let down your nets on the other side. And I would guess that Thomas was the first to cast his net. Because Thomas is no longer a doubter. Thomas has seen and touched and believed. The early history of the Christian church tells us that Thomas spent the rest of his life traveling the world telling others about Jesus. Tradition said that he journeyed as far as India and even Indonesia 
where he suffered a martyr's death for his faith. Thomas learned to trust not only his own senses, but also the testimony of friends that he trusted and the power of the Savior that he followed. We need to have faith, real faith, a faith that compels us to give our lives, like Thomas, to following Jesus. We may never have the physical evidence that Thomas had to justify our faith, but we will have a mature faith that grows as it is tested by the storms of life. Our life may not always be easy, but our faith will be real. Thomas learned to have no doubt. What about you? How is your faith today? Let us bow for prayer. Holy One, we come to you today with our fears, our doubts, our faith, and our love. We come with all of the mixtures of our lives knowing that you lovingly extend your wholeness and peace to cover and infuse our hearts in order to dream your dream for this world. We know it is very easy to hide behind locked doors, but we also get restless, knowing there is more than false safety. Embolden us, dear God, to live as your Easter people. Dare us to live in the spirit you breathe into our bodies. Move us to act, to share, to be your forgiveness and reconciliation and hope in the biggest and smallest moments of our lives. We now pray for those who are ill and suffering, for those who are feeling hopeless, for those that we name in our hearts. We pray for those in Alabama. We pray for those that have had fires and terrible weather emergencies all over this country and in this world. We pray that your peace may cover the world, all of the unimaginable places of suffering and sickness and terror and war and all the real places of suffering and sickness and terror that we know of in our families and friends and community. We pray that you Easter us up with courage to live into the joy and hope of the risen Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of God. Amen. We would now invite the ushers to come forward. Now is the time when we support this congregation by bringing our gifts to God. stand and we will sing Alleluia, Alleluia.
Holy God, we give you thanks and praise for light, life, and love, and above all, the presence of the living Lord among us. By your Spirit who breathes within us, strengthen our faith, use our gifts, and work in our lives to bear witness to the resurrection of Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Now I invite you to join in the closing hymn, Just a Closer Walk with Thee. Just a closer walk. Oh, I'm sorry, let's start with it again. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all forth. Go forth filled with the love of the risen Christ. Go forth and spread that love to all whom you meet, that they might know Jesus. All of this we pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>